Yeah, who said it was easy? <laughs> anyway, hi everyone, welcome to the studio. It's Martin from May Street Records. I hope you're keeping well, and as ever, I hope you're making good music in your own recording spaces. In today's video, <laughs> I'd like to quickly get into my mastering method uh, once I've kind of baked the cake, mixed the track, um, and I want to kind of bring in some analog aspects to my mastering and in a way make sure we're all good and happy to present to the client. I do this for every single track, practically, um, unless it's just not required for any reason or not asked for. Um, I like to bring in the actual hardware because I just kind of feel better doing it. It's just the way I work. So this isn't the way you have to do it yourself, um, but it's how I kind of roll. Um, so the initial method, if you look at the actual screen I look at, I do it within Pro Tools. Um, I have a master track, which is basically what's going to be recorded onto, and we're going to see the track live be recorded back from the analog world. Um, I also have a reference track area, which is kind of handy because, for example, if I have an artist and they sound like James Blunt or they kind of admit they want that sound, you know, for example, and uh, I would then ask for that particular song, which they want to sound like within their master. And obviously the songs have to be similar anyway. And it gives me a reference just to go between um, to make sure I'm on the right track to get the sound thereafter. Um, obviously the reference track has to be similar to the source you're recording yourself, sorry, you're mastering yourself. Um, otherwise it just wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. But it could be used as a level reference, but for me, it's more about the audio, the sound, the textures, the warmth, the lack of warmth, the EQ, etc. Um, but in this case, I'm going to work on a song uh, that I've already mixed and show you the route that I get into. So as you can see, I have some analog gear. Um, I do most of my mastering EQ within the box. So I do that on a digital side, just so you're aware. But ultimately, I have uh, the use of the Neve preamp. Um, I've also got the use of um, my TLA uh, audio compressor. I've got the use of my Tegula Cream, which is a fantastic compressor to put over a mix or a, or a mix bus. And I also have the SSL Fusion, which has become very popular. And boy, does that thing do great things to music. <laughs> so I think without further ado, what I'll do is I'll play you the track that we're going to work on. The way I do that is that I play it through my master playback. So the mix is coming out of this standalone unit and then it will work its way through all the good stuff. So let's have a quick listen to the track. I'm not waiting for tomorrow And I'm not waiting for this day to end Cause our life was just beginning Didn't want that feeling to ever end So I wait for you So then that's the track um, and as you can see it is a pretty sort of like standardy track it's got some electric guitar or cleaner electric guitar it's got some acoustic definitely a little bit of piano and a nice sort of soft ish vocal with some higher end chorusy parts for the vocal um, now the audio track is quite quiet so the first thing I'll do is want to bring up the volume obviously um, to a nice punchy level and the way I do that first of all is bring in some analog gear and obviously compression is part of that and the first step I would do is this I'll go over and get some patch leads so I've got the patch leads and then from there I would then ensure that I patch within the line of the audio source before it hits back into Pro Tools um, the compression units 
any EQ, if I did do any external hardware EQ that the song kind of needs. Um, so I'll just do that now quickly. So now what I've patched in, um, in the line of the audio back into Pro Tools is the audio coming out of my playback unit into my Tegula Cream bus compressor, if you like, but it's an overall stereo compressor. Uh, with some EQ on it as well. And then out of there, I would then go into my SSL Fusion and then out of the Fusion, we'll go back into Pro Tools. And I'm gonna try and blend the, the compression, give it a good sound, make sure things just kind of work. Um, so when they record back into Pro Tools, the track itself as a whole will get bigger, wider, more texture, overall just gel together um, and I kind of do that first before any EQ so let's just watch me do that so here we go I'm not waiting for tomorrow and I'm not waiting for the stay to end Cause our life was just beginning Didn't want that feeling to ever end So I'll wait for you Just beginning I thought I had it all figured out Cause these things are just Alrighty, so what I have um, got from this now is that the track is definitely bigger um, and I have played a little bit longer um, with the audio but already the, the, the track itself is a lot wider it's bigger. Um, the EQ is kind of looking after the high end. The low end is being tamed, but at the same time, still very present to bring out a big sound. Um, and from there, I would pretty much record that into Pro Tools back and then um, have a look at maybe adding some EQ if there's any plugins I want to put in to bring the track even more alive. So now I'm going to record it into the actual unit. So here we go, start into Pro Tools, so here we go. I'm not waiting for tomorrow And I'm not waiting for this day to end Cause our life was just Beginning Didn't want that feeling To ever end So I'll wait For you Okay, so as you can see, the WAV form has got some dynamic and that's really important when you master because remember, there isn't an overall limiter put on this thing yet. So once you've got that audio and you're happy, it's really then just a case of adding any EQ you'd like to do or any extra soft effects once you're happy with the actual analog part of it. And then talking to your client and saying, what do you think? Have a listen to it um, before you make it that big fat 
audio wav which i know you're thinking about um and you kind of feel that's what the client has to give you i mean that's not a hard thing to do you can stick a, a limiter over it and before you know it it's pretty big and it will be loud but that's not really what we're after here in mastering you really want to make sure you've got a good sound um especially coming in from the audio to the um sorry the analog to the digital world you don't want to be clipping there must never be any red uh obviously in the recorder if you see that you're going wrong and you'll find that out when you play it back on different mediums you don't want to go into red at all in digital land um take it from me and uh yeah i mean it's a complete process and sometimes it it doesn't work sometimes you have to just say this session hasn't worked <laughs> let's have a coffee and just come back to it on another day um but ultimately, you're using your ears, you're using your experience, your knowledge of the room you're recording in, or sorry, or mastering in, um, to know how things can hopefully then translate in other production rooms or other stereos, headphones, etc. Um, so there is definitely a time part to it um, that anyone who flies through a mastering process, yeah, they might just be completely used to it. It's a different type of genre and it just works. But for me, I like to take my time. I like to ensure that it's at the best possible quality it can be before passing on for people just to sort of listen to the first 10 minutes or five, sorry, 10 seconds and then transfer to the next track as we do on sometimes on an album. But if you know that you've put your heart and soul into that particular part of making sure the track is deservably mastered the best it can be um you'll always feel better for it as the engineer who actually mastered the track um it can be as intricate as you want it to be but you have to just enjoy it have breaks listen at different volumes um on different speakers even and uh take it out into the car you know the usual things to make it work um, but overall, it is really experience and uh, talking with your client and making sure you know what the band or the artist or the producer wants um, and being realistic with them. If you get a track and it doesn't seem to warrant anything that can happen, which they kind of expect to happen because of the way it's been mixed or recorded, tell them, be completely honest. If it's something they can fix, they'll do it. If they feel that that what you're saying is incorrect, then you're not the right person to be mastering their stuff. At least you've been honest. They can take it somewhere else and eventually they'll be fobbed off or um, someone will do a nice job and it was all fine in the first place. It's just one of those, you know, you have to really just keep playing and keep being honest and uh, don't feel that you can't ask the questions or ask for changes, etc. cetera. Um, just like how your client would be with you if they heard your mix or your master or your recordings. There's nothing wrong with changing bits. Um, it's really being open-minded and understanding at the same time holding a little bit of your ground and explaining why if you feel things can't change. Yeah, who said it was easy? <laughs> anyway, um, I hope this video has given you a little insight to what is done and how it works um and yeah until the next time enjoy your own recording and your mastering and everything else you do and i'll see you on the next video cheers thanks for watching bye